friends, we have seen how plastic stage deformation result in different type of structures in rocks and how they may affect the strength of the rock and how they influence our structure, we shall discuss. Before that, we will try to understand if it is a different a level, higher level, that is a rupture stage, a deformation. We shall try to understand this. Then we can together discuss what are the effects of this plastic stage, rupture stage deformation on the rocks and their influences on engineering activities. Have you seen this kind of railway track? Have you seen this kind of bend? How it must have happened? Along the Karwar coast, I have seen if this is the sea, here I have. These are the beaches, 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 beaches here. And sea is like this. And then we have the vegetation here, all coconut and other plantations. And here they are here. Now, I find something unusual like this, perhaps, and at this, there is a small nala is coming. Beaches should have been like this here, locally. If there is a sand bed, there should be sand bed here everywhere. If there is a vegetation here, like that. But there is a line like, along which there is a nala flowing. On this side of the nala, vegetation is up to this. This side of the nala, vegetation is up to this. Beach is up to here. Here, beach is like this. Sea, like this. Something unusual phenomena. Now, these things, I do not find, can this happen with a plastic stage deformation? Something else beyond that must have happened. Otherwise, how this can be? Yes. Are Wonderful, you see. Now you say, if I find along this line, these layers should have continued, but is shifted here and continued. And this, perhaps, is a kind of a fault. What do you mean by fault? Faults are fractures in rocks. This is a fracture in rocks along which appreciable displacement has taken place like this. This mood, this mood, displacement of different type means this side, this side. On either side of the fracture, the rocks moved in a different direction. Displacement has taken place. The relative displacement is called fault. If there is no relative displacement, then for example, this is a rock and there is a crack, after the crack, rocks have moved like this, relative displacement. After the crack, rocks have not moved any relative displacement, but they have moved perpendicular to each other, perpendicular to the plane of the crack. Then perpendicular movement moving apart, then it is called a joint or fracture or a crack, whatever it can. Therefore, what it distinguishes faults and joints is the relative displacement. Faults result from brittle deformation. What we have seen so far folds is a plastic stage. This is a brittle deformation, next stage of deformation. Typically develop in especially upper layer of the earth because upper layer of the earth that is crust, it is very brittle. As you go deeper and deeper, pressure and temperature increases, we know. As with the increase in temperature, rocks become more plastic. Therefore, they do not undergo immediately a ruptural stage. Therefore, at a shallow depth, brittle material, they immediately respond this way to the pressure and we have a faults. See, so many. And this is the one, see, this is the crack. You see 
how the change displacement continuity is disturbed this is not continuous but here this is not continuous here and here you see this is the crack along which this block this block this block this block dislocation has taken this there is one more crack along like this here here this here it means in the rocks if we have a fracture relative movement has taken place it is called fault and here you see this is a crack again here again here see this is the crack along which displacement has taken place if relative displacement has taken place it is a fault no displacement it is called joint but both are cracks the effect of both are different on strength of the rocks and therefore i have to handle both the sides differently yes now why i should bother about the faults the faults may extend from centimeter to meter to hundreds of kilometer when my site 30 by 40 site whatever it may be my site 1 cm scale to or a meter scale i am not bothered about but when this is tens of meter to hundreds or kilometer especially our road project dam or reservoir or tunnel project we are worried even tunnel project few meter matters but centimeter not uh, not at all important for us we can just excavate and get out of this thus they may vary in a dimension from centimeter to kilometer depends on the dimension the effect of these on the rocks and therefore our structure or engineering activities there are some negative effect there are some positive effects also positive effects provides a passage for percolation of water and mineralizing solution if there is any cracks in the rocks through that crack water can percolate and reach and we can get a good amount of storage of water underground if there is a fault from depth if some solution can come and deposit some minerals here they help for mineral deposits yes responsible for lake and swamp these are developed along a river bed if there is this locally somewhere here we can have a pond like example i give you for example there is a river flowing like this and up across the river if a faulting has taken place now this is the river river originally was flowing like this and now it has to flow like this and then there is a bending and if across the some other rock has come now this may be lateral or vertical if this block has moved up it can obstruct the river flow water gets stagnation stagnation and pool like situations can develop so this faults are potential oil traps oil when the earth crust or different layers are forced to compression squeezed this oil may move here and there and they may come across an impermeable layer they get accumulated we call they are trap the oil so these are some positive effect these are all the interest of a geologist but for an engineer these are the major defect hence a potential hazard in our engineering works why we'll discuss fault movement trigger earthquake faults facilitate movement and help earthquakes and landslides landslide and earthquakes can cause fault they are complementary to each other they are good friends therefore if a fault is a weakness series of other weakness can develop in the rocks faults may be hazardous in a dam and a reservoir site it should be waterproof but if there is a fault through which it is a crack open crack through which water can flow escape see page 
all those are possible and therefore if a faults are present in the construction site it is considered as weakness defect in the struct site we have to take a lot more precaution so what exactly the fault now just now i have said when two blocks of rocks if they are all a crack and then one of the crack is here one of the crack uh, block is here this is a crack this is the one i have shown so different type of terminology we use to understand we can call parts of fault and this is the one block they were together before faulting now due to this cracks and forces they have moved down the one which is lying below the fault plane this is ff is a fault plane below the fault plane we have a foot wall this block is resting on the fault plane and this is called hanging unsupported means it is free to move this is a hanging wall this is a foot wall one which is below the fault plane another above the fault plane if this is the horizontal surface and this is the crack this crack makes some angle with the ground or horizontal surface that we call head sorry dip this angle is called dip head if i draw a vertical plumb like that then this angle that is complementary to the dip this plus this should be 90 degree this angle formed by a fault plane with respect to vertical is called a head when beds are faulted this block and this block were together now horizontally they are see if this is the separation they were together once upon a time but due to fault they are moved apart and this distance we call heave heave is a the net horizontal displacement a separation between the two blocks which were once together these blocks are once together but due to slip movement now vertically they are so much distance separated one block is here another block is here this is the net vertical separation we call throw and this is the separation bit sorry here to here from here to here this is opposite edge here to here we call a slip slip is the movement along that plane along the inclined plane thus we have slip is the relative displacement of this point and this point or this point and this point any two points that were formally existed together heave yes just now we have said the horizontal component through the vertical component we have said and head is the complement of the dip angle dip is the inclination we have defined friends now what is the hanging wall we have just defined what is the foot wall we have just defined for plane the planar surface or a fracture along which relative displacement has taken place in the picture which i have shown i have shown as a line in the three dimension if i have this is the plane this is the plane so the plane we call fault plane so the fault plane is the planar surface or the fracture along which is the relative displacement of block first fractured two blocks are formed one of the block moves at the plane along which such movement has taken place fault scrap is that plane just now i have showed like this that a plane in 3d this is the this is the plane this plane 
he is called the scrap slip is the total displacement just now we have defined yes the same thing i have shown this is the fault plane fracture plane this is the slip we have defined this is the upper layer this is a foot wall this is the hanging wall which is lying on this the relative displacement has taken place these are some of this the same thing this is the fault plane which this is the line this is the plane and the line and this is the angle of inclination of the plane just now we have defined the same thing we have shown here with one more with three dimension so whenever there is a fault obviously we try to classify it based on that we try to understand what is the effect of these on the strength of the rocks on the site condition etc generally we have based on the geometry with respect to the local structure local condition local topography we try to understand the strike fault the default or oblique faults are general simple classification what are these now this is if this is the local st structure fault plane is like this the fault plane and the movement are parallel to the local structure we call it strike fault and here the fault if this is the fault plane and the movement has taken place along this this is a gradient and we can call it a default here the movement is like this neither parallel to strike nor parallel to dip some in between this is called oblique fault so fault plane parallel to dip parallel to strike parallel to neither parallel nor parallel to dip or nor strike then we call oblique faults there are different type of faults they classify based on the relation of the fault plane and movement with respect to local structure it is easy for them to understand especially in a site like uh, tunnel project a dam project etc that is easy for them just and we also classify normal fault what is that normal fault if this is the fault plane this is the foot wall this is the hanging wall hanging wall moves downward relative to the foot and obviously this is quite a normal block moves towards gravity or downward by virtue of weight and it is normal therefore we call normal fault reverse fault if this is something reverse if this block moves like this then this is called reverse hinge fault arcuate fault what are those we shall try to understand now normal fault if we have stresses developed this block moves downward that we have just now seen if that this is a hanging wall if that moves downward then we call a normal fault angle of inclination with respect to the horizontal is generally if this angle of inclination of this with respect to horizontal is generally between 45 to 50 degree even lower is possible higher is also possible generally lower if it is we call a slip generally we call these are caused due to the horizontal tensional forces and then they slide when cohesion is split because of tensional forces then blocks can easily slide causes extension in the originally if this was the block and after faulting if this moves what happens this was the original size now after that is the split it may slide like this now this much area is required that is we feel as if there was additional extension and increase earth crust extends due to inclined nature 
the fault plane and downward displacement of a part of the starter. There, there is a downward movement. Special type of this are host and Graben. I repeat, this is a block and this moves downward, moves upward. Originally, this is the size when they move this word like this and they move like this. We feel as if there is an increase in the length of the rocks or more space that is extension of the earth crust we call. Special type are of that normal fault. What is just normal fault? Just now we have defined. Uh, this, this is the fault plane. This is the foot wall. This is the hanging wall. They have moved relative and hanging wall moved downward. If I consider this only this part, this is one normal part. If I close this, this also normal part. This is the foot wall below. This is on the fault plane. This is hanging wall. Here also hanging wall moved down. Here also hanging wall moved down. It means this is one normal fault. This is another normal fault. Central block moved downward and that kind of structure is called a graven. It's very important where some these are the important structure, river may flow, some important coal deposits we find in this kind of structure, they are important. Graben is nothing but it is two normal faults bounded and central block moved downward. Reverse is a ridge or host, this is also a normal fault, this is a fault below foot wall, this is above hanging wall. If you consider this is foot wall, this is hanging wall, this is also bounded by two normal faults, the, but the central block remained stationary, here different, here different. A ridge like features are formed, ridge like features develop and that is a host and often we find enormous very straight hilly region bounded by scarp, escarpment like that. Then there may be a river valley flowing like this. Then we have the case of graven and host. Now you see a beautiful photograph. This is like this central block, central block like this, side moved down, side moved down like this, like this. This is a case of Graven, sorry, host, and here this, this is a crack, this is a crack, this is here moved, this one moved down, central like this, this is a graven. So, graven and host result in elongated hilly region like that, bounded by escarpment and a long linear wide valleys where materials can come and deposit like this. So, host and graven are something different. These are all type of a normal part. We have a reverse part. What is that reverse part? If this is the fault plane, this is the hang foot wall, this is the hanging wall, hanging wall moved up. Unusual. See, along the crack, this was like this and this has moved up. This has moved up, this is moved down. So, this is hanging wall has apparently moved up with respect to foot wall, this will cause in shortening originally wide, now they have moved and there is a shortening of the crust take place or area like that. And special variety are thrust faults depend on the angle of this to push a material against the gravity, a lot of pressure is required, force is required and that is, they are also called thrust faults. And low angle reverse fault, if this fault plane is like this, this is a block and very gentle fall, then after faulting what happens, this is very gentle, this becomes the plane. So, this is called low angle reverse fault or a thrust fault. If the angle of this fault plane, this fault plane is less than 15 degree, what happens is, if this is the ground, 
this is less than 15 degree, this is the one block, this is another block. What happens? This block move over them and rest on the older rocks. Carefully see, this is the fault plane. This was the block and it was here, but it moved here and now resting on this. On the same rock, that rock come, this is younger rock, intermediate rock, older rock. This older rock come and sit on the younger rock. This kind of relationship develops, especially when I take a borehole, drill hole, I have very confusing situation. And how do I understand this? These are special type of reverse fault where nippe, nepe, etc. are formed. Yes, strike slip fault, this is the displacement is parallel. Just now we have mentioned faulted blocks have been moved against each other essentially in a horizontal direction, horizontal direction like this. They are also called transform faults or lateral faults, horizontal movement, no vertical movement has taken place. And they are also called sinistral and dextral if this block came this way, I am standing here, correct? See, if I am standing here, and my this right side block moved or my left block has moved depends on the whether right block has moved, left block has moved, we have sinistral and dextral situations and we call it different. Especially these are important along the coastal belt, coastal landforms. I show you in the vertical coast is like this, like this. There is a headland, there is a headland like this, there is, there is a river, there is a river like this. Coast is like this, like this. So, rivers, there is a up elevated area, up elevated area, a, a rocky land, rocky land, like this, this happen. And this kind of movement creates different type of landforms. The best example, St. Andrews Fault, St. Andrews Fault, not St. St. Andrews Fault in California is another important example. Nature Fault Plane or mode based on that people classify. What is it? Rarely displacement during the faulting occurs along a single plane. If this is the plane, there are several fractures take place parallel to that. Not a single plane, it is in terms of a zone along which many small cracks, small cracks and one block is here, another block is here. Generally, if movement take place along several small cracks, we call it a zone and they are more or less of parallel and we call them all this as a fault zone. Displacement has taken place relative to each other along a particular zone where several cracks are there, they are all parallel to each other. We can call this as a fault zone. A fault plane may be curved often. So far I have discussed it like this, but often this may be curved. And then we can call this as a curved fault or arcuate fault. What is that? Arcuate fault, if I angle, 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 the angle of the fault plane varies from place to place to place to place. If that is the case, then we call it arcuate fault, the direction and angle. This is the direction, direction like this, slight like orientation we find. Angle of dip varies all along the fault plane, then it is called the case of arcuate fault. Step fault is a set of parallel fault. Steps, steps. Steps like. What is that? 
they have several fault plane consistently in one direction, blocks are moving down, down, down. I went here, they moved down here, they have moved down here, they moved down. Consistently they have moved downward and more well fault planes are parallel, this plane, this plane, this plane are parallel to each other. Then it is the case of a step of fault, radial fault, they appear to radiate from a common center, we call radial fault. Example, there is one fault plane, there is one fault plane, there is one fault plane, there is one fault plane. This was the original block, this was the original block, this was the original block. Like this, you see, these were together, but this moved this way. These were moved, but this moved. These were together, moved. These were together, this moved this way. But all fault plane appear to come from a common center, but different layers moved in a different direction. This can come inside or away from like that. Such kind of situation where plane appears to come from a common center and there are number of faults. Such type of faults are called radial faults. Set of faults on the surface appears to radiate from a common center. NHNL fault is something, if this is the case, there may be a case, there may be a case, there may be a case. Now you see, this was the block, this they have moved. Now there was one more block, but movement is something different, not similar to step fault. And here again, here, here again, here, this may be normal fault, this may be reverse fault. At the end, we have N like or after erosion we have this is H like features we formed like this like this N and H like pattern also develop so sorry so N H L on faults are another type but somewhat similar to step faults but the movement is something irregular, not necessarily step like a fault plane, not necessarily parallel to each other. Then the result in NHL on fault. Right, so we will continue. The classification based on the record of activities also people classify. These are very important in major structures, dam site, a structure which has to rest for more than 100 years, 200 or 1000 years. I have to look into the record of activities whether in that place earthquakes or faults have taken place in several. For example, in Japan, every 30, 40 years they have a volcanic activity, there is, there is an earthquake, etc. Then they have to be very careful in construction activities. There are some active faults. Faulting occurs when shearing resistance of the geological formation is overcome by tectonic forces. There is a tectonic force and shearing beds offer resistance for the tectonic forces. If it is within the limits of their resistant force, then nothing happens. But tectonic forces so active, they overcome the shear resistance offered by the rocks and then we have some faulting occurs. So occurrence of faulting is accompanied by earthquake often. This is an indication of instability. Frequently tectonic movement like earthquake takes place and movement to take place. This is an indication of instability. It means active faults are indication of instability repeatedly that is movement is taking place. The faulting may be treated as an attempt to reach stability because of the hard, rigid and solid nature of the rock masses. This stability is not achieved in one stroke. Even after that, there may be a slight movement after earthquake. Still there is some movement. One more minor shocks are there. For that also the rocks respond. Thus, there is a repeated movement along that block. Then we call 
it is active for because movement along the fault plane is continuing. That is an active fault. Now, because fault plane offers a least resistance for the readjustment, once the cracks are formed, water percolating or there is no contact, they have blocked, they may have moved, least resistance they offer. Readjustment of the block concerned and the release of accumulated energy in the rock take place. Once stability is attained, parting may not occur along that because energy is released. Once the stability is attained, faulting may not occur even if it occurs, it may be of mild intensity, then it can be called as a, a dead fault. No further movement. Once it was movement has taken place, no further movement. They have achieved that. In between, we have one more fault called dormant fault. What is the dormant fault? I have not shown here. Active fault is one. Another dormant, yes. Movement had taken place in the geological past, but I am not sure whether it will take place again. I cannot rule out that it cannot take place. It may take place. I am not sure what is the magnitude, when it can take place. Therefore, I classify it as a, a dormant fault. Thus, we have active fault, movement is a continuous, still happening. And dead fault, no further movement had taken place. Once upon a time, there was a fault, yes. But dormant, any time it may happen. Yes. Those are different types of faults. Now, if faults are this type of faults, then how do I know that fault has taken place there? How fault occurs? Because it is going to affect our civil engineering structure. How do I know? Now, dislocation and direct observation are the easiest way. For example, in a road cutting, in an outcrop, I find this separated. Therefore, the easy way is wherever a road cutting clips at side or on the uh, quarry, etc., this is the directly visible where dislocation movement can be easily seen. Yes. Often it is not seen, vegetation cover or something else, we don't know. Or this crack is not seen. But beds repeat along a direction, along when you go there, repeatedly that rocks are seen. The repetition of beds across a traverse, if you say, this is the rock, this is the rock and the, the same rock is here, this rock is here, again same rock is here, means somewhere here. So across a traverse, same set of rocks if found repeatedly, you can guess there is a fault. One is the direct observation, this is the repetition. Often this happens two blocks when slide against each other, nothing is left out, but here striations, grooves, polished surface, etc. are seen. Then we have the case of a fault, unless that such kind of a slip or friction movement takes place, these striations are not developed. Right. Now, I have two blocks, when they slide each other like this, this surface of polished or striations or grooves, etc. are developed. And this we call often a slicken side, striations, polished surface or grooves, etc. are present. Often such features may not be there, but this such a polished surfaces, so frictions, silicon sites also we call are there, then that is another indication. Another indication is a myelinite. We know rocks are not of uniform composition. 
there are different minerals, hard minerals, soft minerals are there, etc. When subjected to that kind of striation, some soft materials will be completely powdered. Some hard materials they resist. If it is partially hard, means moderately hard, moderately soft, then soft materials are not totally powdered, hard materials are not totally broken, but somewhat in between they are stretched like polished, elongated like this. We have soft materials flow, hard materials like this, they are elongated, this kind of structure may develop or rocks completely, a huge rock block, they are broken into smaller, smaller, smaller fragments in between fine materials are present. This is called the brickshia. Mylonization is a powdering, brickshia is in between and sometimes this is kind of stretched, elongated in the direction of stress. This we call Agan, A-U-G-E-N, Agan, knees. Knees is kind of similar to metamorphic rock like knees, Agan knees. This is somewhat Agan knees, similar to, not perfectly. Mylonite is completely powdered. Brickshia is angular rock fragments. Huge rock fragments are broken into small and smaller fragment. Often silsification and mylonization. If there is a fault plane take place, along the fault plane, some solution from depth can come to the surface. It is in a pathway through which high temperature materials from the depth may come. They may deposit some minerals here. Mineralization can take place or simply nothing but only silica can be brought. We call quartz vein silicification. Similarly, carbonate veins are also possible. So, such features are common. We can directly observe. The other way is, topographically, suppose a river is flowing like this, sudden there is a waterfall here. A presence of waterfall is one thing. We have Gokak, Jog, waterfall, yes. Generally, waterfall, yes, a river has a gradient, but vertical cut like Jog, Gokak is not possible. On either side, hard rocks, this side also, this side, hard rock. If it is a uniform like this, should have been there. But uniform rock, but if this is the case, unless movement of the rock take place, this kind of river valley is not possible. That is indication of fault. Another one, if the block have moved, water moves down, then flow like this, then flow. So, that is a river flowing like this. If there is a faulting, river flows across the fault, they change, they change their direction. They change their direction. Here, get, there can be meander formed later, cutting like this. These are all possible. Therefore, river flow either in a straight path, as we have shown, the straight path followed by bend in the first satellite image I have shown, yes, this is an indication of fault return. This is an old planation, plain land. If they are found at different levels, then also it is indication of a fault. Old planation, surface, plan, plain, level surface, erosion surface. They are at a different levels. Straight scarps like Gokak or west, along the many river waterfall side, we have steep cut like that, is again indication of a fault plane. Otherwise, the topography, normal process of erosion, smooth landform formed. If we have a landform like this, three dimension then we have this escarpment as a result of fault. Traces of ancient river gravels. Ancient river gravels we may find across these. Then that is another indication. Topographic and physiographic changes, yes. Escarpment, yes. Waterfall, yes. 
we may get a springs along a line all along the maharashtra coast we do find because western ghats there is a spring there if you connect all those springs are in a line generally springs one spring here 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 they may occur but if it is in a line in a line like water coming water coming water coming all along this here we have spring here we have spring like that these are indication of the fortune so what is the message of this we are able to identify repetition of beds and omission of beds in the field we get in a tunnel section we can directly observe road cutting we can observe or in a bore hole yesterday we have discussed there is a possibility all this indicates even geophysical technique i can employ yes there is a fault that type of fault or this type of fault of course that is detail the first message i have the moment i have a fault what is my inference fault can be of any dimension centimeter less than i need not bother but if it is a meter kilometer several meter yes i have to bother faulted area are neither neither safe nor stable for any foundation purpose we will discuss this more specifically when we emphasize on for dams or reservoir like but in general faulted area means unstable because through which water can percolate water is a source for weakness they lubricate the contact they facilitate the movement they cause earthquake they cause cause landslides therefore fault is considered a source of weakness considerable of fracturing and shattering of the rock take place rock strength is modified this means that area is neither compact nor massive or strong and hence unfit for foundation wherever they suffered some of these things are possible fault breccia mylonite etc we have seen then rock strength is so much modified the site is not suitable especially for major foundation like a dam etc when the fracture zones are saturated with water their strength comes down drastically and then there is a seepage of water movement everything take place therefore if faults are present in any site it is considered as a very weak site faults are most unfavorable and undesirable geological conditions at the site for any given purpose for location of reservoir or foundation for a dam or a bridges or huge building for a tunneling or for anything lay railway like etc i have shown the photograph how railway line is twisted we have seen then this is because faults considerably weaken the rocks and render and facilitate movement dislocation displacement then everything is possible further as long as faults are active the site is continue to show indication of movement earthquake possible landslide possible therefore if faults are active future movement especially in presence of water which lubricate the contact and facilitate a movement so they are highly hazardous they are not suitable for foundation and hence we have to investigate the site very thoroughly for presence or absence of faults yes the fracture can act as a channel ways for movement of ground water so far i have said is negative effect water can percolate into deep yes and get stored underground possible good along the fracture ground water can come to the surface and appear as a spring and supply water to the rivers along maharashtra coast many rivers along western ghat many rivers originate because of the spring formation what is a spring ultimately if this is the ground condition if this is the water table if there is a heavy rainfall recharge water table arises and they intersect with the ground and they cause 
spring and flow of water flow of water this is natural when water table rises up topography so inclined they intersect but this kind of intersection is also possible if i have ground water here and if there is a ground water here and they can try to reach the surface and therefore they cause the spring here whenever they intersect springs are formed that can serve as a source of water for a river yes important at the same play, time at places suitable for rain water harvesting structure i impound water make them to percolate and get stored thus they act as pathways for ground water or percolation of water ground water storage artificial recharge and formation of reservoir or from the reservoir leakage of water all this possible the fault ground is unstable as long as faulting is active the area where fault is present and if faults are active it is unfavorable for many project like reservoir they are mostly accompanied accompanied by earthquake collapse of the lands landslides etc therefore unstable if dip direction of the fault plane and the surface slope occur in the same direction beds are also sloping land the fault plane is also sloping then there is a possibility of a slip and landslide huge landslides occur like this therefore it is unfavorable condition how faulting occur pla take place faults occur due to various causes among them tectonic cause are responsible and are the major one but there are many other also it is natural that compression and tensional forces mutually interlinked example when i take tectonic tectonic when i say when i say these two blocks move away here tensional force but this block here there is a compression in tectonic there is a compression and tensional forces together they occur they are interlinked in one part we have a tension and the part we have a compression therefore this is tectonic in both the cases here tensional force block move away easy to slide when two blocks come in contact with because of pressure the fracture zone create along the fracture there is a possibility of movement sometimes the formation of magmatic intrusion i have said therefore if these are different layers of rocks a magma has to come huge quantity of magma it bulge the rocks it bulge the rock and if a pressure is continued it a fracture and then this fracture become avenues for magma to reach to the surface therefore magmatic intrusions are associated with the fault plane occasionally local settlement under influence of gravity subsidence take place then also faulting occurs therefore there are several reason how a faulting can occur we will discuss this is another form of deformation friends both have these folds the faults and is another of milder magnitude joints they also influence our structure we shall discuss that